Okay, in this video, we're going to get into the actual quantum mechanical model of the atom and start working our way through that. So to do that, we're going to do some comparisons uh, back to the planetary model, because that is one of our learning targets for this unit. So uh, first thing, in the quantum mechanical model, one of the biggest things that is different from the planetary model is that electrons are not in an orbit. Okay, so we now believe that electrons do not move around uh, the nucleus in a nice orbital pattern. Okay, uh, instead, we do know that the electrons are found at set energy levels. Now, this is not different than the planetary model. Okay, so planetary model and the quantum model both have things set at set energy level. We call those different quanta of energy. Okay, so the the idea of quantum or quanta of energy is both in the planetary model and the quantum mechanical model. Now, within these energy levels. Uh, the electrons are sitting on different orbitals, okay? So uh, you can see this as maybe a little bit more complex of a system where these energy levels before were thought of as single orbits, and now we know that these energy levels are actually more like regions that within inside those regions we have these orbitals, and orbitals are areas of probability. Uh, the way you can probably imagine those is if you imagine a soccer field and you imagine playing the game of soccer and, you know, athletes running around, playing the entire game, if you were to ask somebody, what is the probability of finding a soccer player on a soccer field, they'd say it's pretty high, okay? Now, if you flip the question around and say, okay, you know, where are the most, most probable location you're going to find a soccer player, they'd probably say on the soccer field, okay, during a game anyway. Um, so it doesn't mean that they absolutely have to be there. It just means that it's most probable that they are located there, okay? So that means there, does, there is an allowance for the electrons or the soccer players in our analogy, to be off the field. And the same thing here, where this orbital is just a mathematical probability. So one of the big differences is the quantum mechanical model is no longer a drawing. It's now a mathematical kind of representation of where this, these electrons can be located. Okay. Now, the last piece of this puzzle comes down to a guy named Vernier Heisenberg. And Vernier Heisenberg came up with what we call the uncertainty principle. And the uncertainty principle tells us that we cannot determine both the location and speed of an electron at the same time. Okay, So what happens is, if you take a look, this is not Heisenberg's equation, but it's kind of a simplified version of it. If you take a look, to figure out the electron, okay, let's kind of read through this. This delta means change, so a change in x, which is position. So a change in position times the mass of the electron times the change in velocity of the electron will equal any changes in energy times the change in time. Okay, so over time, okay, if we if we do a certain amount of time, how energy changes for the electron is equal to how its position changes and how its velocity changes. Okay, which seems like a decent little equation, but here's the problem: if I don't want the position to change, okay, so if I want to know the exact location of my electron, so I want my position to not change, this value becomes a zero or approaches zero. So as the change in position approaches zero. If my energy and time has to stay constant, which it does, that means my change in velocity has to go to infinity. Okay, So what that tells us is that the more precisely we know the position, the least precisely that we get to know the velocity. Okay, Now, if the mass stuff kind of is above your head or it doesn't create, isn't great for you, don't worry about it. The idea is just accepting the idea that there isn't a way for us at, at this point in time to do this, to both know the location and speed of an electron at the same time. Okay, So that's Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Now, we're going to watch a little video here um, on electron behavior and kind of some stuff on the quantum model for you guys to see. The uncertainty principle holds that it is impossible to know the position and velocity of electrons at the same time. All we can do is describe the probability that an electron might be found within a certain region. However, electrons with a given energy follow certain patterns around the nucleus. These are called atomic orbitals. Chemists picture the orbitals like clouds that are dense in areas where the electron is more likely to be and less dense in others where there is less probability of it being found. Each atomic orbital may be described by a set of four quantum numbers. The principal quantum number is called n. As n increases in value, the atomic orbitals become larger in size, and the electrons are found further away from the nucleus. 
As atomic numbers of elements increase, they have electrons in these larger orbitals, and therefore the size of the atom increases. Orbitals of lower principal quantum number have lower energy. The electrons first fill up the orbitals of lower energy before orbitals of higher energy. The second quantum number, L, refers to the shape of the orbital. There are four important shapes, each with a slightly different energy. All S-shaped orbitals are spherical. P are dumbbell-shaped. And the D and F orbital shapes are more complicated, as shown in these drawings. The third quantum number refers to the orientation of the orbital. This refers only to the P, D, and F-shaped orbitals. And finally, the fourth quantum number refers to the spin of the electron. An electron can be thought of as spinning on its axis in two possible directions. This means an orbital can only accommodate two electrons, each spinning in opposite directions. So the energy of an electron orbital is described by both the principal quantum number n and the second quantum number l together. As n increases, there is more than one orbital shape. For example, where n is equal to 2, there are s and p shaped orbitals. s orbitals have lower energy than p orbitals and fill first. At n equals 3, d orbitals with higher energies than p fill last. This diagram shows how the orbitals of the elements from 1 to 10 fill with electrons filling the orbitals of lowest energy first. The p orbitals take one electron each, and after this, pairing begins. This is repeated with all of the elements. It is called Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity. Look at oxygen, for example, element 8. A neutral oxygen atom has eight electrons. The two in the first energy level are in the s orbital. In the second energy level, two are in an s orbital, and then as the p orbitals are filled, one electron goes into each of the p orbitals, and the last electron pairs with p1. The electron configurations of atoms have a direct relationship in how they interact with each other to create molecules and compounds and all matter in the universe. Okay, we'll stop the video right there. Um, as you can see from the video that we no longer can really draw the quantum mechanical model like the planetary model because with all those different orbitals and all those different shapes, uh, it really isn't a model that is drawn. But instead, we just use a mathematical um, probabilities to, to identify where the electrons are actually located, okay? So um, this model is definitely more complex than what we've seen before, but it is not so complex that we still can't map out the location of the electrons. We just need to do something a little bit different to do that, and what we need to use is something called electron configurations, okay? So uh, in our next video, we're actually going to go a little bit deeper into the different orbitals, and we're going to talk about how they look uh, all the properties that is, and then get into this idea of actually being able to map out the electrons. Thank you.